Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Abdul Kader Al Sahel, Foreign Affairs Minister of Algeria. تفضل معالي الوزير المنصة لك. You have the floor, Excellency. شكرا السيد الرئيس. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me, first of all, to address my warmest and brotherly congratulations to Her Excellency, Madame Maria Fernanda Espinosa, for her brilliant election to preside over the 73rd session of the General Assembly. I congratulate her once again. Indeed, her wealth of experience in international political affairs will undoubtedly be a precious help as she successfully conducts the work of our Assembly. In our quality as Vice President elected by this August Assembly, I can assure you of our full support to her as uh, she conducts her important tasks. I would also like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to His Excellency Mr. Miroslav Lachak for the devotion that he showed during the previous session. And my deep thanks also go to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, for his enlightened leadership and for his praiseworthy initiatives launched since he took up his functions in order to breathe fresh life into our organization, particularly in the essential areas of international peace and security and development. Madam President, we must regret the fact that the world overall continues to experience very many different crises of differing intensities. This is a crisis that Mr. Antonio Guterres uh, was quite right to become so alarmed over. He quite rightly pointed out that conflicts have become worse and new dangers are emerging. Global concerns with regard to nuclear weapons have never been so great since the Cold War. He very well pointed out that climate change is developing faster than we can respond to it, that inequality is increasing. And we are seeing unacceptable violations of human rights, and that nationalism and xenophobia are getting worse. In a context, the context of advanced uh, and irreversible, I would say, globalization, the seriousness of these uh, major uh, challenges, old and new, are being further heightened by the perverse effects of an economic and financial crisis which um, is still with us. Despite this, and this is even more alarming because of the appearance of vague unilateral and protectionist desires in recent times, we have to have the courage to recognize the inadequacy, indeed the pointlessness, of a number of economic policies that have been followed up until now, basically because of the uh, deficiency of uh, the structure of a global governance system which increasingly is ineffective. When he assumed the presidency of the 29th session of the General Assembly, President Abdelaziz Bouteflika warned that 
it was not enough to gain a seat on the United Nations to be uh, sure that there would be no hunger or lack of security. Today, we can no longer content ourselves with the uh, perpetuation of our international order, which no longer promotes the implementation of the universal values of peace, justice, equality, and development, um, or the progress of science and technology. Rather than contributing to improving the lives of people, much rather we are concentrate this massive concentration of economic and financial resources in the hands of ever fewer, widening the already dangerous gap that separates the people in the richest and poorest parts of the world. Indeed, what we have to realize is that we are facing a genuine global moral crisis. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that the subject chosen for our session uh, is particularly appropriate. Today, more than ever before since its creation, the United Nations must find the way to enable it to fully play the role that its founding fathers uh, assigned it following the devastation of a global world war. Implementing this vital design for the international aim for the international community cannot be done, however, unless there is renewed international commitment in favor of effective and efficient harmonization that is in harmony, harmony with the principles contained in the United Nations Charter, a commitment to which the late Kofi Annan, a proud son of Africa, and a committed citizen of the world lent his name and to which he devoted his life. The United Nations, it is true, remains the forum par excellence for dialogue and cooperation between all nations of the world, but it must also provide the changes that are necessary to bring this about. In our view, the major change uh, that we should attempt to bring about and to which we must uh, apply all efforts and means is the reform of the United Nations itself. This reform is imperative and it must relate both to the structures as well as to the functioning of the organization and in particular the Security Council paying particular attention to repairing the historic injustice done to the African continent in terms of underrepresentation under in the two categories of members for this body. The reform must also relate to the revitalization of the General Assembly as well as the strengthening of its authority. and fortunately there is an ever greater consensus around this issue. Madam President, aware as we are of the responsibilities and the contribution um, that we can make to the preservation of international peace and security and in full respect for the guiding principles of our foreign policy, Algeria is, follows with great, great interest the conflicts and crises that uh, are affecting our part of the world. As we continue to fully assume our role within our means, we will never cease to reiterate our conviction drawn from our own experience that in the search for a solution to conflict, there is no better approach than that which promotes political solutions through ownership of the parties concerned and through inclusive dialogue which places h higher national interests above all others, thus preserving the sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity of states, whether it be situations in Mali or in Libya or in Syria or in Yemen. Only this kind of approach can allow these brotherly countries to find once again peace and stability and 
be able to uh, begin rebuilding. With regard to the Western Sahara, which as a problem of decolonization uh, is the primary responsibility of the United Nations, Algeria believes that resolving this cannot be done other than through the inalienable and irrevocable exercise by the people of the Western Sahara of their right to self-determination. My country reiterates its firm support for the efforts of the Secretary General and his special envoy for the Western Sahara, and we express the hope that their action will contribute with the support of the African Union to the resumption of unconditional negotiations and in good faith between the two parties, namely the Kingdom of Morocco and the Polisario Front, in order to arrive at a mutually acceptable political solution which will provide for the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara. In the same way, Algeria is convinced that only a solution based on international law and the recognition of the irrevocable national rights of the Palestinian people, in all, including their right to establish an independent state with Jerusalem al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital, can put an end once and for all to the conflict which for seven decades now has been tearing the Middle East apart. Madam President. Algeria was the very first target of uh, terrorism at the turn of the last century, and now it has become a global scourge, creating so much destruction. At the price of very many heavy sacrifices, my country has been able to face this alone by adopting an approach and means which have shown that they are effective. This experience, which we are prepared to share is based on the belief that any strategy to combat terrorism must necessarily address the root causes of this modern scourge and it must be accompanied by an, a decisive uh, fight against radicalization and extreme violent extremism. The international community is particularly called upon to ensure that combating this scourge is also accompanied by measures for uh, de-radicalization and genuinely promoting uh, harmonious uh, living together. In this regard, Madam President, um, I'm happy to recall the United Nations resolution initiated by Algeria and adopted on the 16th of May, uh, adopting that as the International Day for Living Peacefully Together. This resolution is part of the efforts aimed to promote the principle of inclusive dialogue, which should govern the search for solutions to the challenges of stability, both nationally and internationally. We are justly proud that the values of the principles of living together in peace um, are the cornerstone of the civic harmony and national reconciliation, a policy implemented by the President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Abdelaziz Bouteflika, in order to put a, an end once and for all to the national, uh, national tragedy and reconcile Algerians amongst themselves. These um, ideals, bringing people together, are also the underlying strategy for our policies and programs and strategies that are implemented in various areas of economic, social, uh, educational, cultural, and religious activity. These are the same principles which constantly guide the foreign policy of my country uh, in our immediate neighborhood as well as in our interaction with the rest of the world. Madam President, 
Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, as well as the Addis Ababa uh, Plan for Financing for Development, are remarkable achievements which require consistent mobilization, both of the means needed as well as the will for their implementation. We express the wish that the high-level meeting on funding for sustainable development by 2030, organized by the Secretary General of the United Nations on the 24th of this month, we hope that this will lay, the, lay solid foundations for concerted action between the United Nations system and member states uh, in order to promote development in accordance with the aspirations of developing countries as advocated by the G77. Ladies and gentlemen, Algeria, which uh, participated actively in the preparation of the 2030 Agenda, is about to finalize its National Progress Report covering the period 2016 to 2018 on the implementation of the SDGs for voluntary submission to ECOSOC in July 2019. This exercise is part of the new growth model that was adopted by Algeria in 2016. It is a policy which plans to uh, structurally ensure that by 2035 Algeria is an emerging country with diversification and transformation of its economy through uh, ensuring the relaunch and consolidation of economic growth that is profitable for all citizens and the entire region. Madam President, I would not like to conclude without underscoring the important efforts undertaken by national authorities with regard to the most recent constitutional revision benefiting all sectors of the population such as rights of women and their empowerment and also young people to ensure their effective integration in the economic and social development of the country. These efforts have led to our country being recognized by the international community, both in the area of promotion of human rights as well as in the area of stability and security. We are honored uh, by this progress and we feel reassured in our global actions. Madam President, the rejection of power policies and their dangerous consequences requires that we always search for dialogue and consensus and that we strengthen multilateral action. In our eyes, this is the best way to respond to global security and development threats, uh, challenges facing all nations and all citizens of the world. The United Nations, of course, has a central role to play in this uh, enterpri enterprise of uh, gaining the respect owed to it by all and in demonstrating the efficiency and effectiveness which we all expect of it. Its success will be everyone's success. And this cannot be the forum where we only express our differences, but it must be where these differences are resolved and where partnerships are forged. We were particularly encouraged by the unanimous acceptance by this General Assembly of the concept of living together in peace. Algeria is convinced that uh, failure is not inevitable. Just as we cannot get used to misfortunes, conflicts, human dramas, terrorism and environmental um, damage because there is no isolated destiny, as our President Bouteflika um, likes to say. Ladies and gentlemen, it is up to us 
thanks to a genuine political willingness to make the United Nations the irreplaceable instrument that it is at the service of genuinely peaceful and sustainable societies. In any event, due to our convictions and clear action, Algeria will be a faithful and committed partner for peace and development. I thank you for your kind attention. May the peace of God be upon you. I thank His Excellency, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Algeria, His Excellency Abdelkader Messahel. I thank him for his statement, and I now give the floor to Her Excellency, Madame Yaldis Polak Beagle, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Suriname.